Hello, everybody. So today we're going to continue with lesson 9.3, graph data. Um, the lesson starts on page 397 of the fifth grade Go Math textbook. The basic question that you should be able to answer at the end of the lesson is, how can you use a coordinate grid to display data collected in, it, in an experiment? Now, I'm actually going to uh, skip page 397 and 398. Um, because this is some data that you would need to personally collect and then graph, okay? So it doesn't do us any good for me to just write numbers in for you, okay? So I'm going to start on page 399, and you can apply what I talk about to do pages 397 and 398. All right, so for items 1 through 3, graph the data on the coordinate grid. All right, so we see Ryan's height, his age in years, one, two, three, four, five years old, and his height during that time span from 30 inches to 44 inches. So when he was one year old, his height was 30 inches, so 130. Then at age two, his height was 35 inches. At three, he was 38 inches. At age four, he was 41 inches tall. At age, age five, he was 44 inches tall. So what does the ordered pair <clears throat> Actually, we need to graph the data. So let's go for, let's find one along the x-axis and go up to 30. So one, 30. Then two and 35. Over two, up 35. Now 35 is not on my graph, but there is a line in between 30 and 40, and that's where 35 would be. So two and 35. Three and 38. Well, again, 38 is not on my graph, but I know it's bigger than 35 and almost to 40. So I'm going to put it right about there. 4 and 41. Well, 41 is just going to be barely, barely past 40. So go over 4 and up 41. And then 5, 44. So just before the halfway mark of 40 and 50. All right, so what does the ordered pair 338 tell you about Ryan's age and height? So if we go to 3, that tells me his age. So the 3 tells me Ryan's age. The 38 tells me how many how tall he was. at age three, okay? Why would the point six forty two be nonsense? So if we go to six, they're saying put 42. Well, let's just think about this. As you get older, you don't shrink. We should get taller, right? So 642 wouldn't make sense because that would show that he's decreasing in height. All right, so it just wouldn't make sense to, to show him decreasing in height as he gets, gets older. All right, so let's look at number four. 
So the table shows the depth of the Dakota River at different times during a rainstorm. And we, so, so we have after one hour, a depth of seven feet. After two hours, eight feet. After three hours, 10 feet. After four hours, 12 feet. After five hours, 15 feet. So we see that as the hours are increasing, the depth of the river is also increasing. So graph the ordered pairs from the tiles on the coordinate grid. So 1, 7. Go over 1, up 7. Now I don't see 7 on my graph, but 7 has to be in between 6 and 8. So go over 1 and put it in between 6 and 8. 2 and 8. 2, up to 8. 3, over 3, up to 10. 4, up to 12, 5 up to 15. 15 is not on my grid, but it's got to be between 14 and 16. So go right 5 up to halfway between 14 and 16. All right. So we have five data points, 245, 245, so five hours. And all I said was to graph the order pairs. So we, we graph them. Okay, page 400. <clears throat> Mary places a miniature car onto a track with launchers. The speed of the car is recorded every foot. Some of this data is shown in the table. Mary graphs the data on the coordinate grid below. So we have Zero distance, the speed is zero. The distance one foot is four miles per hour. Two feet, eight miles per hour. Three feet, six miles per hour. Four feet, three miles per hour. So it looks like a car increases and then starts to decrease as time increases. So let's see. So she has 0.34. Well, there isn't a 3.4 here. So let's look at her grid here. So distance in feet, that should be first because that's the x-axis, and then speed. So she's saying that the distance in feet is 3 and the speed is 4. Well, I don't see that anywhere on the grid. So the only time I see 3 and 4 is right here. But that would mean a distance of 4 and a speed of 3. So she has these backwards. So let's graph the data correctly. So 0, 0 is the first point. And then 1, 4, because again, distance goes first because it's along the x-axis. So over 1, up 4, 2, 8 over two, up eight, over three, up six, over four, up three. So again, if we're looking at the pattern, it look, it's increasing as the distance increases, but then decreases its speed over time. Describe the error Mary made. Well, she basically just reversed the coordinates. So she reversed the coordinates. She, she graphed the x-axis. I'm sorry, she graphed <clears throat> speed on the x-axis and distance along the y-axis. So she got those backwards. 
All right, at what distance do you think the car will stop? Well, as I look at the pattern here, as the speed goes, it's, it's increasing by four and then it decreased. It went eight to six to three. So it, it decreased by three miles per hour here. So it makes sense that the next one will also decrease by three and it'll be zero. So I would say that the distance would be five feet. The order pair, pair would be five, zero. So basically, after it reached two feet, it started decreasing in speed. So it peaked at eight miles per hour and then decreased to six to three to probably zero in the next one. So probably about five feet. <laughs> so that's it's really it for this lesson. It's, it's not very involved. It's basically applying what we learned in lesson nine to and applying it to data that you might collect in an experiment. So until our next time when we talk about line graphs, I will see you soon.